So riddle me this. What happens when a guy badmouths a, so a website for, I don't know, 10 or so videos about on how about they don't do double pages properly, but the same guy forgets to actually check the settings for the website to see if there's another way of reading the chapter that would preserve the double pages. You get this, a, an intro that allows, that tries to somehow apologize for that. My dear friends, my dear viewers, welcome back to the channel and today, as you might have guessed and as you of course read by the title, we are here to cover this week's chapter of One Piece 984 of its name, My Bible. Now, I want to say right off the bat that this chapter was very 50-50 for me. There's a lot of good stuff, a lot of good information here, but I just... I'm going to say it outright, I'm probably alone in this, but I'm going to say it outright, I did not, and I repeat, I did not enjoy the reveal at the end of the chapter. Now, if you're watching this, you already know which reveal I'm talking of. So yeah, I did not enjoy it. The moment makes sense, the whole construction of the character makes sense, however, I just don't like the way it is now because now as it is it's very bare bones and it's something that i've been stressing out over the over the most recent chapters and it's something that i really didn't want happening but we will get there when we get there this chapter had a lot of cool moments a lot of cool money shots as i call them and yes it this is what prompted me to actually go and search if there was a way to, I don't know, make the chapter more readable that way. And there is, in fact, a way to do that. And for the last, I don't know how many videos I bad-mounted Manga Plus's website for not doing double pages properly, it's not so much of an apology, because the vertical reading... I mean, if you're on your phone and if you're reading vertically, it still breaks... But if you do it horizontally, it's much, much better, I admit. But yeah, on the PC, the horizontal just works perfect because the double pages are as they should be. In fact, everything is quote-unquote a double page now because you have two pages on the same... On the same... Oh, now you're not doing them correctly. You were doing them correctly a moment ago. Oh, bloody hell. Let me just... Let me just try and fix that. Okay, let's not, let's not, let's not move it, because it was working a moment ago, but it's not now, but we'll see. Anyway, just sorry for that. But yeah, chapter 984, my Bible, cover page, volume 30, gang badges of my family. Again, I can't say much more about this cover. Pound is presenting himself to Lola and Chiffon. They were treated to the NL phase. It's just a running gag at this point, so let's let's move forward. We see page one and ulti. Sorry, I I don't know why I need this to have in my hand. I just want to have something on my hand. I I want to. So yeah, we see um, not Yamato. I was about to say Yamato. We see page one and ulti just recovering from the beating. They the beating, the their their short encounter with Luffy and Yamato. Uh, it's it's very funny because. The guys are all worried with page one because they saw he he got Luffy's elephant gun to the jaw, and they're like, "Oh my god, that must have that must have hurt or something." And he's like, "Oh no, that almost almost loosened my jaw a bit, but I'm okay." And yeah, Ulti, the medical team is is around her, but she just she just bonks them both in the head, and she's just like nothing ever happened. So yeah. Apparently, and this is something we noted, a lot of us noted, is that Yamato, when he used... I'm gonna keep calling him he for now. But when he used the, the Raimei Hake, he used it with both hands. Or more like this, I guess. He used it with both hands. And the earlier... The, the fan translations 
made a joke with the... I don't know if the joke is like part of the original speech. I have, I have yet to see someone confirm that. Um, I'm sure Arthur from the Library of O'Hara has an explanation for that. But they made a sort of a joke with Rame Hake, that the Ha is for eight, and then they replaced the Ha for like the kanji of four. No, not the kanji, but the, the, the translation for four. So it would be something like when Ulti says, ah, Thunderbag will more like Blunderbag. But in, in the fan translations, it's like Rame Hake more like Rame Shike. Like to signify that it was half the power of Kaido's. Which apparently shows that even though her technique is still a lot powerful, it doesn't come close to Kaido's one-handed, you know, bloody bludgeoning someone in the face. But yeah, the, the pleasures also comment that the dinosaur users are really, really tough. And it makes sense because... For all we know about dinosaurs, they were really, really tough. I mean, Zoans have the fame to be slightly tougher than most devil fruits, but I guess that ancient fruits, specifically the dinosaurs, get that extra bit of, of durability, because they are these ancient beasts that were said to be very resistant, very resistant except towards maybe one another because they had the carnivores especially had teeth that could perforate anything so yeah and we get a small scene with Yamato and Luffy again of course Luffy is not just gonna trust a guy who just told him he was Kaido's son understandably nothing really exciting here honestly it's just a cool panel to see I'm sure the anime will pick up this panel and just enlarge it into a full episode uh, a thing the, the most interesting thing here is Yamato saying this is only making me remember a battle from the past and this is going to come back later about something he slash she says when about how Luffy reminds her of Ace I'm just gonna drop the he the, the, it's, there's no point now the cat's out of the bag so it's a she Yamato's a she, so yeah. And I'm gonna come back to, to that ace thing a bit afterwards. So yeah, they manage to escape. There's an explosion or some sort of smoke bomb, I don't know. And they escape. Page one cops up to the, to the place, but again, they're not there anymore. Then we cut back to the performance hall in the Skull Dome. And yeah, Orochi's just telling them how they came from the future. And of course, no one believes him because how, why would they? Why would they believe me? I guess, I guess if we think about it, it doesn't really make sense because guys who have powers, but I mean, I guess they do know that these fruits come from a scientific origin and they are not simply mythical fruits. I mean, they know. But for guys that are part of a crew, that whose top officers have mythical and ancient Zoan devil fruits like a fruit that that allows you to travel through time shouldn't be that out of the ordinary I mean sure it is but again for guys who are part of a crew whose top offices are ancient and whose captain is probably a mythical Zoan like either the Oni model or the dragon model it's Still debatable because there are still people who think that he was a dragon who ate the only fruit instead of a honey slash normal human who ate the dragon fruit but yeah for them to dismiss time travel a time travel fruit just like that it seems a bit but yeah i guess these guys are low ranking so they don't they are not known for their smarts are they but then we get the first money shot well not yet in fact Ah, here it is. But yeah, we see a very cool scene with all the the Alliance members mingled with the Beast Pirates. And, and I just love... Oda is having so much fun and I cannot... Now, reading this chapter, I am so sad that Usopp, Chopper, Nami and Carrot were caught 
well, they are not yet caught, but they were found by Big Mom because I would really love to see them interacting with the Beast Pirates as Jinbei and Robin are. Because they're just mingling there with a barrel in, in, in their hands and they're just dissing out. I mean, dissing as in not really dissing, but they're mingling, so it makes sense. But yeah, and Robin is just like, ah, don't... Don't get him all up for yourself. Throw him out here so he can skewer his eyes out. I want to stab his freaking eyes. And then she's like, what? What will he do? What will he do? We need to save him. And this is so cool, man. I, I can't wait. I say this all the time. And I can't wait to see this scene in the anime. Like, Robin's VA, like... Because I imagine that this that she's saying this with like a sadistic voice. And I wanna see Robin's VA who's normally poised and calm and collected. Just go bananas with this sentence. It's gonna be so much fun. But yeah, then they, they are all I mean what what the heck should we do? I mean I don't know. Also Jimmy is doing a face. I don't know if he's reacting to what Robin said. Like Oh my god, she's crazy! <laughs> or if he's really just reacting to the whole situation. Because... Yeah, there's... There's a lot of things going on and... And then we see some of the Alliance members just mingling and they're all... Laughing, but... Deep down they are thinking, oh my god, Lord Momorosuke, what, what must we do? And... And yeah, they, they just... They just want to jump into the action that, I mean, they can't. And especially not after something that happens. We then cut again across. This chapter cuts a lot, which is cool, which is very cool. We cut to Lowell's polar tank and we learn that he has arrived at the back of Onigashima. And then Law prepares to send himself and the scabbards to the island. And that's exactly what he does. In the first money shot of the chapter... We see the polar tongue emerging from the depths, a room is created and shambles are made. Well, first he cuts a bit of rock from Onigashima, he cuts the rock, he shambles the rock with himself and the scabbards and the polar tank submerges again. We don't know where the rest of the crew will go. Maybe they'll go back to the entrance of Onigashima and, and arrive from there. It would make the most sense because if not, well, they'll, they'll, they'll just be out of the battle, which, I mean, I guess it's okay, but it's just, it's not like they are super important characters that we want to see fight. I mean, it would be cool to see them fight, but I assume they're just, they're just normal fightings, hand-to-hand, -hand, sword fighters, maybe a pistol user or two. So yeah, we don't know. But I don't think we'll see them anytime soon. And in the second money shot, which is a continuation of the first money shot, we see them land in Onigashima in this beautiful, beautiful winter entrance. Just everything covered in snow. And yeah, Law mentions there are two entrances. We see the big one at the top of the stairs. And the second one, I assume, is the one on the Tori gate to the left of the stairs so I don't know maybe that's what he means so but law theorizes that the the one the first that I mentioned is the one that they should go to and it's probably correct and <laughs> I mean it's just this next scene is just so funny I don't know how this happened was he dropped by Marco like has the ship capsized Nekomamushi just Pummels head first into the ground, just, just a side rhizo, and it's just like bam, he <laughs> drops there. Then Marco arrives as well, flying. Then Kawamatsu comments on Nekomamushi's appearance. Ashura Doji and Kiku react to someone else, and yes, we get the confirmation that alongside Nekomamushi and Marco. Izo has arrived in Wano. The scabbards are now complete. With the betrayal of Kanjuro, the scabbards are now complete. So yes, unfortunately, I don't think now that 
that Shinobu will be part of the Scabbards, officially part of the Scabbards, but apart from Kinemon and Denjiro that are leading their own forces, this right here is the complete roster of the Scabbards. Izo is back, and so he is now part of the Scabbards. It's, it's really cool, like, how they reunite together. It's so cool to see these people, like, they spent so many years apart. Like, Kawamatsu stayed in Onigashima alongside with Ashura Doji. And uh, not Kiku. Kiku traveled in time. Nekoma Mushin in Orashi escaped back to Zo. So they spent 20 years, or a few months, if you consider the perspective of Kiku and... And, um, and Kinemon and Kanjo and Raizo. And that fact makes it all the more interesting that Izo hasn't seen Kiku for over 20 years. But for Kiku, it was only a, f a couple of months. Like, she has barely aged, and but she has aged since he last saw her. Or since he last saw him, because they're both man. I mean, I, I don't know. She's she's probably a woman, yeah, she's she's a woman, but she poses as a man, kind of like Yamato. I, I always get this confused, I'm sorry. And yeah, it's really cool to see them get together again, because it just is. Netomamushi, however, has something very interesting in his paw. It looks like a gun, but... I mean, then again, I really don't know what that is. It looks like a, a gun, like, like he strapped two barrels, because they have a the little pointer that some of the older guns had. Like a little pointer that served as the aiming thing, I guess. I'm sorry, I'm not an expert in guns. But yeah, it's really interesting that... Because last chapter or so, he still had the bandages on his hand, and now he's full battle ready. So that's that's cool to see. But yeah, Marco, however, comments on how comments about a shadow, a strange shadow, he spotted at sea earlier. So this is most likely uh, Perospero. And I saw a lot of people. I mean, not a lot of people. I saw someone on Twitter commenting that the shadow could be Blackbeard and that Marco would battle Blackbeard at sea. And honestly, that makes no sense. It makes no sense to me. The, the one thing that makes the most sense is being Peros Pero. So I think that Marco will go to sea and battle Peros Pero at sea. Or at the very least, at the entrance of Onigashima or wherever Peros Pero manages to land, because... It makes the most sense. And it would be cool to see two first... I mean, not first commanders, because Peros Pero is not technically a... But you know what I see. Marco was the first division commander. Peros Pero is the first son. So, you know, they, they are both old school. They're about the same age. So yeah, it'll be see to see these old dogs go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one another. Uh, I, I really hope... I really hope we get to see that. So Marco needs some love. Marco needs some love on this on this arc. Oda went through a lot of trouble to bring him. So yeah, Marco, Izo, they deserve some love here at this arc. But let's move forward to the third money shot. And this, this is the money shot, man. We see back at the performance stage, back where Orochi has Momonosuke crucified. We see Kaido and the Three Calamities all in a single panel, just towering over Orochi and Fukurokujo. And they come and Kaido says, I'm going to explain the new Onigashima project. What is the new Onigashima project? I don't know. But I have been thinking. I have been doing some thinking. Because, let's be honest, does Kaido need Orochi? I, I mean, really, does he really need Orochi? Just throwing that out there. Because, 
Orochi is weak. Sure, he has a powerful fruit, the mythical Ebi Hebi no Mi model Yamato no Orochi. Sure, but we know that the fruit does not make the user. So, I mean, I just... Imagine if he plans to relocate Onigashima to the flower capital and he plans to fully take over Wano. Because what else could it be? He has an island. Maybe the island is running out of quote-unquote space for his base. What if he plans to make Wano in its entirety, perhaps? What if he plans to make Wano Onigashima? And like each district will be dealt to, to a top officer. One to Queen, one to King, one to Jack, maybe one to the Tobiropos. Maybe he actually plans on having some of the Tobiropo eliminated so that they can ascend, so that the remaining ones can ascend and, and instead of the three calamities, we have like a, like a top six because then we would have five or six other districts in one of bar the flower capital. And then each of them would have one. I mean, this is totally out of the out of the the realm. This is totally theory realm. I mean, there's nothing to there's nothing to point that this is exactly what he wants. But the new Onigashima project. I mean, new Onigashima. That's the thing. I think we should be focusing on new Onigashima because because if if it wasn't to be because it almost makes it sound like there's going there's this Onigashima and that he wants to make another Onigashima someplace else and why it's called new Onigashima Kind of like how I think, and I'm sorry if I'm wrong, I'm, I don't know the origins of the name of the city, but I imagine that the city of New York, it's called that because, I mean, they took the name York from England and they just call it New York. It's probably not why it's called that, but I always, in my head canon, that's what I imagine, that's why New York is called New York. But... Yeah, it makes me it makes me think that he wants to move Onigashima or create a new Onigashima someplace else. And I think that he will want to do that in Wano. And you know what else would be also extremely cool? Is for him to kill Orochi right then and there. Because imagine, he has the entire, almost the entire force of Orochi right there in Onigashima. He can deal with them, like, the only Wabans who are there, I don't know if the Mimawari Gumi are there or if they stayed in Wano, but who cares about the Mimawari Gumi? Like, who cares? Jack could probably take the Mimawari Gumi by himself, and I am giving him a lot of benefit of the doubt. But he probably could do it. So who cares about the Mimawari Gumi? No one cares about the Mimawari Yumi. But yeah, this was really interesting. And this panel, woof! My god, I loved it. But then we reached the end. And I don't know how, how long this video has been going for. But yeah, let me check. Give me a second. Yeah, as always, 26 minutes. I tried to do this a little bit smaller, but never mind. But yeah, we get to the end and I want to spend a few minutes here because I, I feel like I've been saying that a lot in, in the recent chapters. I want to spend a lot of time here because I think these two pages deserve it. First, Yamato starts telling her story about how one day she told her father, Kaido, she wanted to be Kozukiyo and that Kaido beat her for it. She was, we learned that she was there 20 years ago, so she, if she is to be the one that people were comparing images to, she's probably way older than Luffy, like at least by 10 years, 
or more. Like, she says she was at the execution of Odin. She witnessed the Hour of Legends. And that she... I don't know if she was entranced by him there. Or she was already entranced before. It's not really clear. But... She was inspired by him. She says she was inspired by him. By it at that moment. So she cried for him. She mourned him. And then this is where it starts. I mentioned a few chapters back. And a lot of people have been mentioning this. That the Odin's journal would make a return. And would be important somehow in the story. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Yamato, the keeper of Odin's journal. She says how everything is recounted there. He's granted Benjira's life and very important things, very important things, wink, wink, laugh, tail. But yeah, she also seems to think that the, that the scabbards are dead. Little does she know that they're all alive. And kicking and yeah she chose to place upon herself the dream of Odin to open the country to the world she then starts taking off the mask Luffy starts noticing that something's wrong about the whole sun thing she starts tearing the sleeves of her of her dress and then it's revealed Kaido's daughter, self-styled Kozuki Odin Yamato. Yes, so a lot of people called this, called various things about Yamato. The fact that she was a girl, the fact that she was actually inspired by Odin, hence why the chains, the, the little thing on the back, even this sort of style of clothing. So yeah, a lot of people called on that. I'm okay with that. And yeah, first pet peeve I have with this whole thing. And something that I've been saying a lot over the over these chapters, ever since we found out that Kaido actually had a son slash daughter. Also, it's very interesting how even though he doesn't approve of her wanting to be Kozuki Odin, he still treats her as son. So either that's because he has some sort of anguish for a, she being a, a girl. I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong in Yamato being a girl. Let me just put that out there. 2020 doesn't need anything more to add to the fire than me telling that Yamato being a girl is a bad thing. On the contrary, I am all up for strong female characters. In fact, one thing I have to praise Yamato for, or in, in this case Odo, when he drew Yamato, is that she doesn't appear to be over-sexualized. So far. Because, I mean, you look at the full, the full render, and... She is beautiful. I mean, she is a beautiful girl. She is a beautiful woman. But she doesn't seem over-sexualized. So, claps for Oda. Props for that. Probably the figures and the anime will botch all, all that and give her massive knockers the size of her head. But it's Oda that counts. And she appears to be normal. Quote-unquote whatever normal means, but she doesn't appear to be over-sexualized. That's what I want to stress, and that's very important, because I really hope that we have at last a strong fighting female character, and I hope that her participation wasn't only getting that hit on, on ulti and skedaddle away, so we'll see. My second pet peeve is the last sentence she says. You remind me of Ace. Now, I know Ace was in Wano. We all know that. Ace went there. Yes, it's okay. But I st 
still don't understand why all of a sudden Oda decided to go back and bring Ace back. I mean, sure we had that with Sabo and the inheritance of the Meru Marunumi, but Oda brought Ace back in Wano. Okay, when he first, when it was first revealed, it was he was in Wano and that Tama knew him. I was like, okay, cool. He traveled a lot, so it's and that we actually knew he went to Wano because he did that. He taught. Well, he didn't taught. He did that straw hat, the Amigaza hat. I think it's Amigaza. He did the Amigaza for Ors Junior. And he told him that, oh, I learned to do this in a specific place. And we all kind of knew, okay, so he did that in Wano. And it was revealed that, yes, he learned to do Amigasa hats in Amigasa Village. So that was okay. It was a fun bit of world building. It gave all the more tension to the scene when Luffy told Tama that he was dead. He was not going to come back. But he inherited sort of his will for those people ever so more now Yamato having met Ace just makes it, it for starters it opens a lot of like weird theories for why Kaido was actually going to to Marineford I saw a lot of people, and this time it was a lot of people, saying that Kaido was going to, to Marineford to save his son-in-law. <laughs> because, well, you know, Ace pretty much nailed every other female character in One Piece. People have been saying that Jewelry Bonnie is pregnant with Ace's kid. Uh, I don't know. People have been saying that Ace is a time travel joy boy or something. Like... Ace has been a source for a lot of theories. But yeah, I saw people telling that, oh, Ka now we know the real reason why Kaido went to Marineford. It was, or tried to go to Marineford. It was to save his son-in-law. It was to, serve, to save his daughter's best friend. Or, no. No. I mean, I mean, it would be fun. I mean, it would, it would be fun. Imagine. Imagine, like, your Kaido. You don't really like your daughter that much already because she wants to be like your arch enemy. But you can, you still cannot deny her certain things. So she comes to you like, Father, please, can we save him? Please, he's my friend. And Kaido's like, I don't want to save him. Why, why must I go? Whitebeard's there. He's his son. He's going to save him. No, but Whitebeard, Whitebeard is old and frail and you are strong and healthy and, and you can take the Marines all you, on your own and please, Daddy. And he's like, okay, man, buckle up. We're going to Marine Ford. And yeah, they go to Marine Ford and try to imagine how the conversation with Shanks would have gone. Shanks is like... I cannot let you pass. You are going to Marine Ford to cause havoc of unprecedented proportions. And and Kaido's just like, listen, mate, mate, pipe down, Willie. I, I'm, I'm just gonna save my son-in-law, you know, because my daughter is actually quite enamored with him and I don't know why, but I guess I must go save her because he's my, she's my daughter, you know. You cannot refuse your daughter even though she wants to be like your arch enemy. And Shanks is like, with his good arm, he's like, oh god, okay. Uh, well, you know what, I, I can't just let you go, I, I'm sorry. Imagine how the conversation would have gone if that was really Kaido's intention at Marineford. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> okay, but... <sighs> I guess we'll have to see. I am expecting the next chapter to... To shed a lot more light into Yamato herself. Like, not only her backstory, but... Her relationship with Ace. How and when she started to look up to Odin. I think those are all important things we should learn sooner rather than later. 
because she's being said to be a very important character. She has Odin's journal, for Christ's sake, and not Kaido, nor the Beast Pirates know about the freaking journal. So she's being said to be a very important character on that regard. And I think that we need more. I'm going to speak for myself. I need more. I was not happy with the reveal. As I said, it looks samey to the Big Mom situation where we have children of Big Mom with mommy issues. Now we have a, a child of another Yonko with daddy issues. So, I mean, I need more to hook me on Yamato. I am certain that she's a great character and she'll do great things. And she'll eventually grow on me, but right now, I'm not impressed. Like, she looks cool, visually, very cool. I love the fact that she's not overly sexualized, which is always a plus. But, um, I just, I need more from Yamato. Like, this reveal... I don't know what I was expecting, honestly. We have been led astray with the usage of masks in One Piece. I saw a lot of people considering, well, if he's wearing a mask, it's because he looks doofy beneath that mask. And when he drops the mask, we'll see a doofy looking character and we'll be like, seriously, we waited all this time for this and we will outrage and we'll pick up our pitchforks and torches and we'll storm. I don't know, Shonen Shop HQ? I don't know what people would, would march on. I mean, Area 51 is now a no-go, so, I mean, yeah, but <laughs> jokes aside, yeah, it was not that. So maybe I was just shocked to see that she was actually a fairly normal-looking woman. I don't know, a lot of things took me aback on this chapter, but the thing that took me most aback was that warning next chapter hits, July 19, so let's, no, let's pick up the calendar, let's not, in fact I need to change the calendar, there we go, July 2020, this calendar is amazing, it goes all the way to the end of the year, but the most amazing thing is that it actually started in 2017, so I have, I have this calendar since 2017. That's the amazing thing. Not so much that it goes until the end of the year. Of course, it goes until the end of the year. But yeah, I'll have to find another one rather soon. Oh yeah, sad. I, I have this calendar since 2017. A moment of appreciation. This calendar is now on his last run. F in the chat, please, for, for the eventual demise of the calendar. You, you served me well, but never mind. The next chapter will then hit on Sunday the 19th, which is actually pretty cool because it's just, it's the week just before my birthday, so... Okay, it, i rather have a chapter that week than next week you have a chapter and then it says, oh no, it's gonna be on the next week, and I'm like, well, it's still gonna be on the week of my birthday, so yeah. It's all well and good. I hope there's no break next week because we thought the flow was going to return, but apparently not. I mean, we don't know. If next week says we... If... Not next week. If 905... 985 says there won't be a chapter next week, then we know that the, the COVID-19 thing is still in effect. And that the last two chapters were a stroke of luck. But we will have to wait and see. So, my dear friends, my dear viewers, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please, if you have, leave a like and a comment because I really want to know what do you think about Yamato and the overall reveal of this chapter. And if you'd be so kind to go the extra mile, please subscribe to the channel for more. Now there's no One Piece next week, as I said, so I don't know what I'll bring next week. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be One Piece related or anything. I don't know. We'll see about that. I have to think. I'll have to think. I can't make any promises. There was no Kingdom Come Deliverance last Friday because I had no footage. I actually I captured some footage that I plan on turning into something else, but I won't spoil anything just because I don't know when it's going to be ready to release. So yeah, but I will see you guys tomorrow or next week if you're just here for one piece or other things related but if you are i'll see you tomorrow 
and I hope you, I wish you, <laughs> I wish you a fantastic day. Bye bye. This keeps getting better and better. Three, two, one.